my biggest takeaway from Jimmy G's performance last night was not that he's going to throw those interceptions and that they lost. It's that he is going to be the number one quarterback on the market in the offseason. Why do we know this? Well, first of all, because Trey Lance is there. The moment that Trey Lance showed up, the clock on Jimmy G started, which is, which is fine. These things come to an end. Everything is not perfect. And the main question about Jimmy G was never really his skill. It's his availability. But he's shown mostly <laughs> that he can stay available for this year. And in a game last night, like last night, despite that stat line and those two interceptions, which were admittedly bad, He's still going to be the number one guy for a quarterback market that is going to be very, very scarce. Now, I know you're thinking Deshaun Watson, but to me, because of his very obvious legal situation, you have to consider that when you're talking about Deshaun Watson in the market next year. So you can't just say, oh, Deshaun Watson, and he's more talented. Well, yes, we know that, obviously, but he'd be on a team already. He would already have been traded if he wasn't dealing with everything that he's dealing with. Also worth mentioning when you mentioned Deshaun Watson is that he has a no trade clause. So he's not just going to end up wherever you have to consider that he's going to have to approve wherever he goes, regardless of his legal situation. So because of all that, Jimmy G is the guy we know what Jimmy G is capable of. We've seen it. We've seen him in a Super Bowl. Has he fallen short? Yes. Did he fall short last night? Yes. If we go game by game, Tom Brady's one of the worst quarterbacks that ever played. So we know that that's not how we're going to evaluate it. The Trey Lance thing is what's moving Jimmy Garoppolo out of San Francisco. I don't know that everyone in San Francisco even wants to move off of Jimmy Garoppolo, but when you give up a 12th pick, a first round pick in 2022 and 2023, and a comp compensatory pick for Trey Lance, it's bye bye. It's the end of the era for Jimmy G with the 49ers. But. Where could he end up? So if you look at the other guys that are on the market besides Jimmy G and Deshaun Watson, who obviously we know is more talented but has a significant issue to deal with, you're looking at guys like Mitch Trubisky, possibly Teddy Bridgewater, Jameis Winston, Gardner Minshew, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Cam Newton, Andy Dalton. None of those names are probably moving you. If I'm giving you that list and Jimmy G, removing Deshaun Watson from the situation because of the legal circumstances, which we don't know how are going to play out, he is by far the number one guy, head and shoulders above that group. So now you look at the teams that are in need, or we, we are imagining are going to be in need of a quarterback in next, next year going into the offseason. So the Steelers could possibly take someone in the draft. We're all retiring Ben Roethlisberger, and I know he hasn't officially retired yet, but look, we're all watching the same football season here. So let's assume that this is Ben's last stand. So the Steelers, the Eagles haven't completely committed to Jalen Hurts yet. We don't know what the Broncos situation is. Giants obviously need a quarterback. Panthers obviously need a quarterback. The Texans will need a quarterback. Washington football team, depending on how the rest of the season plays out, but I believe they'll be in the market and clearly the Saints. So you're looking at a very healthy group and there could be more, obviously, but these are the ones that we know are going to be in the market. So this is a very healthy group of teams and not all of them are in rebuilds. So it is a very significant off season for the quarterback position, and it's not a deep draft. We're not even talking about the quarterbacks in the draft. Kenny Prude is the only one that's e even being mentioned. And the Steelers know more about him than any other team in the league because they share a facility in Pittsburgh, the University of Pittsburgh. So I think that Jimmy G is going to have plenty of suitors. I think San Francisco is going to be able to get a lot for him. And I think he's going to have a lot of success. Personally, if I'm looking at that group, I'd love to see Jimmy G with the Giants. I think that they need and won't be able to get something in the draft. They need someone that will come in and, and make significant changes and elevate. I would like to see him with the Giants. If it's not with the Giants, I think he would do well with the Broncos as well. But look, there's other guys who are floating out there. Aaron Rodgers, who we'll talk about in a minute. Russell Wilson. There could be some other guys that come on the market. But right now, looking at the landscape of things, despite what happened last night, I'm watching that game, seeing him make these throws. Yes, they didn't come up with the win. But he is a winning quarterback. The only active quarterback with higher winning percentage than Jimmy G, actually, since he's come to the Niners, is Mahomes and Brady. They're pretty good, those two. He had a five and six winning streak going, going into one five out of his last six going into last night. So I, I like Jimmy G. I don't like his availability. But if I'm one of those teams and I'm in desperate need of a quarterback, which a lot of those teams will be, Jimmy G is a great option. And by the way... Best of luck to the Niners, because I like Trey Lance, 
And we have seen that he is incredibly athletic, but that's about it. In the two games he played in, he had completed 51% of his passes, had two touchdowns and a pick, and ran 49 yards in both games. So he's athletic, and he essentially hasn't had a rookie season. The Niners are in a division with Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford, and at the moment, Russell Wilson. So it could be a couple rough years ahead, depending on how things go with Trey Lance. I'm optimistic about him. But the grass isn't always greener. I know people are hard on Jimmy G. I don't love his availability, but if I'm one of those teams, I'm definitely willing to give up some pieces to get a quarterback with the talent level that Jimmy G has. So there's another big game this weekend, lots of big games this weekend, but a game that I want to talk about is the Packers and the Browns. The Packers are currently seven and a half point favorites over the Browns, which feels about right. And the Packers will probably win this. They're great at home. They're six and zero at home this year. They're at the top of the NFC, NFC. They're at the top of the league. Aaron Rodgers is at the top of the MVP race again. And the Browns are coming off of a disastrous week with COVID. I hated the Jordan Love pick. Hated it. Hated it. From the very beginning, I thought it was a disaster of a move by the Green Bay front office. Mostly because you didn't need that position, obviously. But more than that, I hated how they handled it with Aaron Rodgers. I think that stars deserve a certain level of respect when it comes to this type of move. If you're going to trade up, and I know they only gave up a fourth round pick to move up, but if you're going to trade up to take the replacement of Aaron Rodgers, you owe him a DM. You owe him a text. You owe him a phone call. You owe him that conversation. And that's kind of what spiraled this whole beef between the front office and Aaron Rodgers, which seems to have been somewhat settled or at least shelved for the moment And they're having an incredible season. And I don't want to give the Packers front office too much credit for this. I don't want to assume that they did this conspiring to inspire Aaron Rodgers to play better. Because every time the Jordan Love pick comes up, immediately everyone points to Aaron Rodgers' season before that. As if he was some bum or something, which is utterly ridiculous. But since then, he's won a league MVP, NFC Championship game. They're at the top of the league right now. They've already clinched. The only team to clinch their division. And he's probably going to win another MVP. He's probably going to be the first player to win back-to-back MVPs since Peyton Manning in 2008 and 2009. So I don't want to give them the credit that they inspired Aaron Rodgers to get to this point. But he has shown that he does like a little bit of angst around him. He likes a little bit of drama And it's probably because he's so good at football that it's almost easy for him. So having a little bit of inspiration, Jordan would do this. We've seen guys kind of make up these storylines and bulletin board material for extra motivation. I don't think it makes you a better player. But over time, a little bit of juice, you know, a little bit of doubt does motivate. The Patriots do it every year. New England versus everybody or whatever that nonsense is. Like they're not favored every single year. I digress. The point is... Aaron Rodgers has rolled through the NFL since that moment. And it's either going to end up being one of the best decisions that they've made because it completely inspired Aaron Rodgers to go on this journey that he's been on over the past two years, or it'll end up being, I don't want to say the worst, because if they end up winning a Super Bowl, I guess it was still, and he leaves, I guess it was still worth it. But it was a waste of a pick. We know that, because Aaron Rodgers is just unbelievable. I just, I I really am astonished at what he has been able to do, what he's doing this year, considering his injury, and the performance that they've put on as a team, considering all of the injuries and, and, and moments that they've had throughout this season. It's really impressive. They have the Browns at home this weekend, the Vikings at home, and then they finish at the Lions. So realistically, they could finish the season 14-3. and Yeah, he's first in touchdown passes, touchdown to interception ratio, and passer rating, and winning percentage over the last two years. So either Jordan Love is the most inspiring pick of all time, or they were willing to sacrifice that pick and this drama to inspire Aaron Rodgers to win back-to-back MVPs, win a championship, and then leave them. Either way, what Aaron Rodgers is doing is absolutely spectacular, and I think he's going to win another MVP, and it's deserved for him to win back-to-back MVPs. 
I know there's some conversations about some other guys who are certainly deserving to be in the conversation. Jonathan Taylor, obviously. Tom Brady was leading it for a while. Patrick Mahomes is having an incredible season. But Aaron Rodgers is the MVP right now, and looking at the rest of their schedule, they're probably going to finish strong, and he will win back-to-back MVPs. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.